Hello. Today I will introduce to you my colleague Dr. Jörg Schwinde, who will share his knowledge about vaccines and vaccine development with us. Before I come to my first questions regarding vaccines and vaccine development, can you please explain to me what exactly happens within my body if a virus infects me? All right, yes. Um, well, maybe we look at the virus um, itself and what the strategy of the virus is. Mm -hmm. How, why infects the virus, uh, the cell, the body before? Um, well, a virus uh, itself uh, can be considered as an infectious particle. So it is not a living organism. It has not a metabolism. It needs a host to get synthesized components of the virus itself. That does mean the genetic uh, information, the nucleic acid, and the protecting envelope, which is called capsid. And the strategy of the virus is to survive. Um, it will um, um, pass the barrier of the body at first, will arrive at the cell, and now the virus needs to interact with the cell, and this is mostly done by using surface proteins which suit to other uh, receptors uh, of the cell. Mm -hmm. So it is an approach, it is a docking, and then the virus will introduce the genetic material into the cell using the synthesis mechanism of the cell and produce additional viruses uh, to get multiplied. Okay. A virus uh, is recognized uh, by the body as a kind of an enemy. Mm -hmm. And um, as an enemy gets into a battle, the body gets into the battle as well, and reacts on this infection by the production of so-called antibodies. The antibodies themselves react with the virus as an antigen. An antigen has nothing to do in this frame with genetic material. It is just the counterpart part of the antibody and vice versa. If the antibody should have docked to this antigen and has the ability um, to have recognized this antigen, um, this antigen means the virus will be neutralized um, and um, the battle has been won at this moment of time. What we are seeing actually is that this immune, this set off of the immune response does not happen um, urgently um, and uh, therefore um, we see how the current developments uh, which are COVID related at this moment. Okay, so I understand there's this concept of an antibody and an antigen. Is this also the concept how a vaccination does work? In principle, yes. Uh, we have talked about a complete uh, virus um, so far. Um, such viruses can be taken in an inactivated manner or even just subunits or, or components of a virus, uh, for example, um, surface components, surface molecules. The aim is that um, we can consider the one part as an antigen and the set off of the immune system will be the production of uh, antibodies. Um, in such a case, the reaction is not as strong as it would be by a real cause of a disease. Mm -hmm. But the body will be prepared in the case that the battle is really started by um, a uh, virus uh, infection. And um, we need to consider furthermore if um, antibodies have already interacted um, with virus or virus particles, um, these antibodies will be degraded as cells will be degraded um, in the frame of the natural cause um, of um, living and death, cell death. Um, but what remains are so-called memory cells and if an infection like this one has happened, then these memory cells will be able to produce antibodies which facilitate the recognition um, of the antigens and to neutralize them. Okay, this sounds really complicated. Can you explain a little bit to me uh, how long does it take to develop a new vaccine? Well, um, a vaccine um, is um, like uh, any therapeutic, indeed a therapeutic. So the development time is uh, very much similar to other therapeutics um, as well. Um, and um, to give the information quite um, ahead, 
um, it can take uh, at the average up to 10 years. And there are reasons for that. Because like in any medical uh, treatment therapeutic, there are different uh, phases um, how to enter the development. Um, it starts with the preclinical phases uh, to look at uh, toxicology studies. Then um, the first clinical uh, stages under involvement of uh, humans um, will be started and uh, firstly with the phase one, with uh, volunteers and uh, not suffering from that disease okay. uh, uh, people uh, to look uh, whether um, there is an effect um, of uh, the ingredient um, overall. Um, in the second phase, there are candidates taken who suffer from uh, uh, that disease. And in the third phase, even the amount of candidates uh, is increased. All of this does include considerations of populations, different populations, um, age, genders, um, pre um, uh, health conditions, medications, um, and so on. Um, so all these aspects will be considered. And then if the clinical phase three uh, should have been successful, um, we uh, come to the commercialization, to the licensing, to the authorization of that um, therapeutic and the so-called uh, clinical four is started and this is an ongoing process after the authorization of that uh, therapeutic. And these phases are summed up at an average of um, 10 years uh, until commercialization. Um, in the uh, very recent history, um, there is one exception, and that is the Ebola vaccine, which had been able to be developed uh, in a five years time. Well, knowing now that the average time to develop a new vaccination is around 10 years, how can it be that I frequently hear that we will have a vaccination against the coronavirus available already by next year? Uh, this is linked uh, to a huge um, optimism. Um, um, if we look um, at the um, development um, of this uh, COVID-19 related uh, vaccine, mm -hmm. um, we can observe um, that um, by the beginning of publishing the project by the WHO, uh, the projects have increased very much in the last uh, past months. Okay. So if uh, we have observed it correctly, we have about uh, more than 200 projects uh, at this moment. Um, we can observe that different uh, platforms um, are used and um, it is a very international approach. So it is not one company, one nation or whatever approach. It is a real international approach um, where the efforts uh, are uh, strengthened. Um, that is one reason. The second reason is um, that um, faces are not differentiated as strong as we have seen it in the past. Okay. Um, so there are overlaps, for example, between clinical phase one, clinical phase uh, uh, two. So it is not worked in a sequential way only, um, but um, in parallel or, as I say, uh, with an overlap mechanism, um, which reduces the time uh, for application at the given um, authorities. Um, on the other hand, um, and we will have a look at this as well, um, there might come up a type of vaccines um, which have uh, a compound um, that does not need living organisms uh, to get produced. And if you, do, if you can ignore any um, animal, bacterial or whatever contribution inside of the production process, um, then the ways to get the application at the authorities might be abbreviated as well. Okay. Anyhow, and I have started with the explanation, it seems to be very optimistic to get a vaccine ready. Um, the best guesses at this time will be that there will be a kind of a first round uh, vaccine, um, which is not um, the final version um, at that time.
and then we will see how it will work. I know that there are predictions to have a vaccine either by the end of this year still uh, or in the first quarter of the next year. We will have a look at it. I understand we need to test a lot uh, to have a vaccination available that is also safe to use. Are there more challenges in the long way of the development of a new vaccine? Well, usually um, you deal with a living organism and a living organism. And this living organism is developing itself. Um, I think the first priority should be um, the um, safety in the process. Mm -hmm. And um, secondly, um, the efficacy of the given uh, treatment um, and also the time, how to get it uh, into the market or how to get it uh, to the potential patients. Uh, so all these needs to be balanced and um, it is not always um, a way straight forward, but you have to look at the left and to the right side. Having heard a lot now about the different vaccine types or different vaccine platforms, as you call it, can you explain to me the differences, the advantages and disadvantages of the different platform types? Um, well, uh, we can look at it uh, as a kind of a breakdown from uh, top to bottom. Um, as explained uh, previously, uh, we are looking at this antigen antibody mechanism, which is working inside of the body. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, as an antigen, um, full infectious um, um, viruses uh, can be taken, uh, which are so-called life attenuated. We did already discuss the topic virus and life. So virus is an infectious particle, but it is not a living organism. Uh, but anyhow, this kind uh, of a virus is still infectious sets off the immune response, but does not take you into the hospital. On the other hand, there is a fully inactivated virus, but still a full virus, and the inactivation can happen either by heat treatment or by chemical treatment or even uh, additional ways, but this virus is really inactivated. Um, the third um, option can be a subunit vaccine. So subunit vaccines does mean that um, you take a molecule from the surface or the membrane of a virus and take this as an antigen that provokes the antibody's response uh, to it. And in a similar way, um, vaccines, which are so-called conjugate vaccines, uh, that have a polysaccharide, so a polysugar component, in a combination with a protein can be taken in the same way as well. Uh, with this class of vaccines, an additional consideration comes into the game, the consideration of the so-called adjuvants. So adjuvants are helpers to um, enhance um, the um, antigen mechanism and um, to make the immune response even stronger. So um, these are the variants uh, which are aiming at um, uh, viruses or viruses components separated from the virus. On the other hand, there is another concept. Beside of the whole virus or virus particles, there is the option to work with genetic material only. And this genetic material um, contains the code um, for the component and gives the organism um, to synthesize, if you like, the antigen by themselves and then to provoke the immune response. Mm -hmm. The question is, how do we get this genetic material into the body and into the cell? And here different techniques can be applied. On the one hand, you can take a virus, a related virus, for example, that is not a pathogen virus, uh, but is used as a kind of a ferry. So it is a ferry to carry genetic material into the cell. On the other hand, there are purified DNA molecules and these have to be transported into the cells as well. Um, the third uh, version um, are the so-called RNA-based vaccines. And um, these RNA-based vaccines, they jump into the level of the RNA. This means that this molecule can be translated into a protein um, itself and in a direct way. This 
um, concept um, is not a new concept. So it has been developed over the past uh, recent uh, 10 years. Um, and uh, it has a, a general advantage that uh, the protein is folded according to the cell's uh, condition. So um, the protein itself corresponds to the structure of um, the cells. Mm -hmm. This is uh, one advantage. The other advantage, looking at um, RNA-based vaccines, is that the RNA uh, has a defined um, half-time. So it will be degraded. Um, that um, should enable us uh, to um, define the doses which need to be taken uh, for a good uh, efficacy uh, of these nucleic acid-based vaccines. Well, we have already talked about ferries, we have talked about uh, particles, and these RNA molecules, uh, they can be packed into lipid envelopes, and these lipid envelopes are a correspondent um, to the lipids in the cell membrane so that they can interact successfully mm -hmm. and the RNA can enter um, the cell. The next advantage or what can be considered as an advantage is that um, the RNA-based vaccines uh, can be produced without the participation of living cells, of living cells outside of the body, mm -hmm. and this might uh, enhance um, the uh, speed to get it through uh, the um, authorities. So the regulatory uh, steps uh, may be um, um, abbreviated. Hearing now the uh, development of the new vaccine types using genetic information, how does this influence the bioprocess industry? Yeah, we should look at it um, in a way um, that these uh, are options um, that are still at a minority. Um, if we compare the RNA-based vaccines and the DNA-based vaccines, it has been already said and explained that the RNA can be synthesized cell-free. This is not the case with the uh, DNA plus meat environment vaccines, um, so they are still produced in bacteria, in yeast, and this does mean that um, reactors, fermenters, bioreactors will still be needed. Okay, thank you very much, Jörg, for sharing your knowledge with us.